Hello and welcome everyone to our first episode. Um, and today we're talking about uh, ERP and business management software solutions. We're talking not from a sales pitch point of view. We, you know, the, these episodes are very much focused around. And if you know any of my other work and my other, uh, my other uh, broadcasts and so on, you'll know that I, I focus a lot on the mergers and acquisitions and, and post-merger integration work. I also focus a lot on, on the work streams and, and those elements that make businesses work. Um, I've been involved in, in ERP and, and business management software for around about 25 years. So I've managed to pick up um, a whole lot of experience, but more so the, I would say the do's and don'ts and and, and many of the, the, the very useful tactics and, and, and tips that I, that I can see that can either grow your business or can be an absolute disaster. I've seen businesses expand and grow rapidly after they implement a new uh, system. I've seen businesses literally go liquid or get, uh, get go liquidated um, from, from implementing a new business system. So, I mean, that's a, that's a huge spectrum between the two. These, these episodes, um, I'm going to be focusing on different parts of what ERP, enterprise resource uh, planning uh, software, um, and also business management uh, software. And, and what is the difference? What is it, what is it really what am I talking about if I say, talk about that? And we're going to talk about why business management software and ERP software is so prevalently important in, in the business space. Um, it really is. Um, enterprise resource planning uh, is, uh, is what the term, you know, it's quite an old term already. It comes from MRP, which is materials uh, requirements planning, which in the old days when when business software started, if you think about the history of this whole thing, the biggest uh, need in the marketplace for, for ERP business management software in the old days was literally just managing materials, managing the production materials and, and stock management and just the data around um, high volumes of information. And then it turned into ERP when, when it started becoming more accounting and, and, and so on. And now we've got what we call business management software, um, and there are so many. And if if I go and Google and a list, and you and, and I'm sure you've done that. If if this is a topic of interest to you, you'll see that there's a proliferation of of software software solutions. There, there's a proliferation of of different. Um, industry specific software that fits one industry but doesn't another there's a proliferation of 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 uh product market fit solutions that fits a very very niche market but but are not useful in terms of a longer term strategy um and it's also to do with cash flow so often when companies select software and and so on um budget um the impact on business uh, and also, there's also often, uh, I would say, a lack of understanding of why you're putting in a system. Why do you have a system? So let's just go go back to basics. The 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 primary reason for any ERP or business management system is to manage finances and operations, essentially. So when I say finances, it's general ledger, it's debits and credits, it's sending out invoices. It's doing things like customer and supplier management, um, you know, in terms of creating new customers, maybe customer credit limits, uh, if you if you need that type of thing, and it's even maybe even segmenting customers into customer types and and so on. But if we look at ERP and and uh, business management software, there are so many different types and takes on what is essentially, I think, uh, an industry that can that is probably due for a bit of a shakeup because everybody tends to um, tends to look for a solution and then they find that that their budget is, doesn't quite meet um, what is available out there. So then you end up, uh, you know, as a client or or, 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 or or customer of the software, you end up having to do what they call workarounds. Uh, connecting with other software, you have to do integrations and connect, connections with 
uh, with multiple pieces of software. And some people call it a hairball or a spaghetti ball of software that if to do a particular function, you need this. And to do something else, you need that. And this channel, this particular um, Friday afternoon uh, in the UK, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm literally going to be tackling all the do's and don'ts, all the good and bad practices around um, ERP, business management software, and what you should be looking for when you're looking for something new. Or if you already have a, a software, if you already have a business management solution, um, that how to maximize the use of it. But in addition to that is, you know, a lot of people talk about reporting and dashboards and um, uh, it's talking about analyzing information. I mean, these days there's even additional things such as um, AI or a artificial intelligence and um, there are this internet of things. There's also tagging and tracking and QR codes. And, and there's, there's a lot to do with people know a lot of stuff about technology these days compared, compared to where we were 20, 25 years ago. Um, where, you know, where initially I would say in the, in the mid nineties, we were getting used to things like email. Uh, what is, you know, what is internet? By the back end of the 90s, there was that big um, dot-com bubble, if you if you recall, and 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 there was this uh, this idea that the internet would be is going to be the next big thing, and it really was, but it didn't happen at at the time when most people um, expected. Now, you know, we, those days we had uh, different networking systems. So when you had an accounting software, uh, you would have um, a server, for instance, like a, a mainframe where most of the data was kept, and then you'd have multiple pieces of equipment that would log into or view the, the data or mainframe information. You know, we had thin client and, and, and server, and we had these server rooms. Sometimes the servers were locked up in safes and, and in secure environments. And then, you know, things that have, have changed since, and we're now sitting in a cloud environment. And one of the big debates is, for me, what is, what is cloud? What's the definition of cloud? And, 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 uh, and I think there's, there's such a lot of um, misinformation that's gone out that I want to try and make this channel, this specific hour, available to anybody that's in that space of trying to say, where are we going? What are we doing? What do I choose? Where do I go next? Um, you should... You should, if you've been in business for a while, you'll have something of a system. You'll have a legacy system. You'll have systems that are sitting there that you can't get rid of because they perform certain functions, but they're written in old code. They're written in old technology. You might now be looking at something new, but now your old technology and your new technology don't speak, but the new technology doesn't do what your original technology does because the original technology was was developed um, for a specific purpose for your business your unique situation and when you go and, and buy a, a software off the shelf um, many times it's it's uh, you have to make compromises in terms of degree of fit so you know besides looking for the right kind of uh, vendor in other words you're going to have different um, suppliers or, or, or larger organizations that develop software you're going to have smaller organizations that develop software and there's always this race to the to the volumes race to the numbers and if you look at, at any of the of the big uh, the big software vendors such as uh, let's call it Oracle, uh, Sage. You look at um, uh, um, even, I mean, Infor, and if you look at the old IBM, uh, if you look at SAP um, or the or the SAP systems, um, if you if you look at Microsoft, there are a, a multitude of of software developers, large developers that have made it their core business or have this as an element of their core business. They could have multiple products within the ERP and the business management software space. However, as a client or customer 
uh, of these different companies. You you often at um, you caught potentially um, in this uh, ecosystem that these different companies pr- uh, put out there, and and sometimes it could be good, and other times it could be a slippery slope. I'm going to give you um, an, an example. If I take a product like um, Oracle NetSuite and I compare it to an Acumatica um, or even a Microsoft or a Sage product, Oracle NetSuite is is almost entirely cloud-based. Um, in fact, it is, you know, you've got multi-tenant, single-tenant. We're going to go through all of that in the next few weeks in terms of understanding what, it, what ERP and business management software, how it's made up and so on. But when I look at products like that and we say okay if we do oracle versus an acumatica or one of those oracle would do um upgrades with or without your permission in other words if they need to change functionality and so on they'll give you an opportunity uh, a sandbox environment for instance to go through and see the changes that they're going to be implementing they'll give you a time period and I, and, and I think there's two time slots that'll allow you a two time slots, one this time of the year, one that time of the year, where you then can then say, okay, I want to be part of that time slot and you're going to be upgraded. So if you're in, in the Oracle NetSuite space, for instance, you're going to have all customers, very much, almost all of them, always on the same version, almost always on the same um uh, let's call it same functionality. Um, however, each one of those entities are unique. So they'll have developments. They'll have um, uh, APIs and connectors into other software because most of the time that space, that the kind of customer that buys that kind of software um, will have multiple additional modules to make that software work. If you then look at the alternatives out there, let's say uh, like Microsoft, for instance, Microsoft has got a product called Business Central. I mean, the old Great Plains. I mean, there were a bunch of other products they have, but let's just take Business Central as an example. Business Central, Microsoft Business Central, sits on, if you want to do cloud, you then do it by means of the Microsoft Azure um, uh, platform, which is a hosting service. So you would buy the Business Central, which sits on uh, within the hosting service. And in addition to that, if you want CRM and other kind of products, you would then install that within the Azure environment. And you, you have this uh, upgrade uh, option, whether you want to upgrade or not. And this is this could be both good and bad. So you could have within, let's say, Microsoft or an Acumatica environment, you could have a situation where um, the clients don't don't do the, the the upgrades. They don't they don't keep up to date like they should. And then when it comes to being forced, in other words, the software vendor says, "Look, we're no longer supporting versions up to this amount, up to this number." like up to version 8 or 10 or whatever it is, anything below that version, you're no longer getting support from us. You have to upgrade. Then you get forced to upgrade. And then the upgrade then brings with it a whole load of um, potential problems, but also a whole lot of new functionality. And then you have to go through a whole sandbox environment. But you have the flexibility of deciding whether you want to go with an upgrade or not. Sometimes upgrades and patches and things that, that software companies do are um, are, are done uh, purely, you know, d- done because there is a segment of their market that needs a particular additional function, but you don't. And then they'll upgrade that, and uh, and then it affects your database or it affects the way that you're, you, you've done your configurations and so on, even though the new feature didn't really impact your software. So, so coming back to sort of the, the entire um, universe of different types of software, there's multiple options. And I'd, I'd like to put it out there that, that this, this session, um, from a half past three to, uh, sorry, from half past two to half past three on a Friday afternoon, that, that we cover 
the specifics around ERP, business management software, and anything that's, that you, you want uh, help with around uh, selecting software, making sure you get the most out of your existing software, or even asking questions about developing apps. You know, uh, there are sometimes the software you might have doesn't have a mobile phone app. It doesn't have an e-commerce um, app. And now you've got to go to Shopify, you've got to go to um, other uh, other platforms and then try and integrate these things and so on. So if you want to have any any conversation around that, let's let, let, let's have an open platform um, around that. So we, we've spoken about ERP, MRP, uh, business management, software, selection, and also making sure that we understand what the difference is between cloud, multi-tenant, single-tenant, hosted solutions and and so on and and the 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 challenge really the challenge and this is this is an agnostic um a, a broadcast in other words this is not specific to any software i have no affiliation to any software on this platform to sell it i mean i this is not part of this platform but this platform is to assist people out there that are frustrated by the the software vendors themselves and soft and, and software is is often not a, a tool but it is also a frustration and i want to open up the platform for any kind of questions that you may have so things like selecting new software things like re-implementing your current software we've had it uh, many times in, in in my 25 year career uh, what we've had often is uh, the decision not to buy new software it's often the software that, that you currently have. You don't need to go and spend more money. You could just re-implement and reconfigure. Why? Because your business model may have changed. The products and services may have changed. Or, or really, one of, the big, one of the key things is your data in your system might be so outdated now. You might have customers that are no longer with you. You might have products and and other um, data in your system that is no longer relevant is let's clean that up you know that is a great way of of reusing software that you your your users are actually accustomed to using they trained they understand it they're fully uh, aware of its of its pros and cons they've got all their tools and workarounds and sometimes they would have additional spreadsheets and things to to get the proper reporting but all you have to do is reconfigure. You can save yourself huge amounts of money instead of buying something new. Buying something new comes with additional training and ad ad additional business stress. So we have buying new, we have re-implementing, um, uh, re and then you have the other element, which is taking what you currently have. Let's say it's working well for you, but now you need additional functionality. Do you go out and buy something new or do you find an alternative plugin or something that works with your software? Now, some of the challenges which we're going to be covering in the, in the upcoming weeks are things like the difference between an SDK, which is sort of older technology, a software developer kit, versus the APIs these days. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll actually give you examples of, of APIs, what they look like and so on. And if you ever, if anybody talks about APIs, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the audience that, that, that joins um, will be those people that are saying, I'm so sick of salespeople coming to me and confusing me with all these terms, with all these you know fancy, flashy things, and then when I eventually buy the software or I implement it, it's nowhere near what what was what was sold to me or told to me. And and the, the difficulty is the frustration level is because once you've committed, ERP and and business management software in 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 my view is a is is the engine room of any any business. However you'll probably find that most businesses hold on to ERP or any of their, of their core business management software for 15, 20, 25 years and a long period of time. And so businesses change. Um, the market changes. Products and services change. You might have additional branches. You might, um, and as I said at the start of this, I mean, my, my core, uh, I would say, expertise and 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 uh, broadcast that I'm doing and 
and uh, knowledge share is around mergers and acquisitions. It's around uh, the integration side of things. It's about bringing businesses together, joining businesses together. And often their systems might be different. But there might be um, a reason to keep a system within a particular business and another system with another business, even though they now um, have joined or you've merged the business. So there's an integration that has to happen after an acquisition, but you've merged the business. Where, where the difficulty comes in is, is what is the cost of change? What is the cost of keeping it the same? And what is the cost of ownership? And those are one of the some of the topics we're going to be covering in the next ne next weeks and months as, as we go, and that is th those are tools. I've got great tools on working out co uh, cost of ownership of a, of a system. You know, many people look at cost um, as the purchase cost or the implementation cost, but very few actually do a five, ten, fifteen, twenty year cost of ownership planning, and that's that's where the danger sits is if you have no idea of what this software is going to cost you in terms of maintenance, um, upgrades, additional consulting, um, it might be cheap because, I mean, I know that some of the ERP and, and business management software providers out there, in order to attract customers, what they do is they heavily discount software up front, knowing that once you commit it to that software, knowing that after a year or two, they can push their prices up, and the stickiness, the the uh, the 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 cost of change, not just from a financial point of view, but from a a business going into a distressed situation because every new piece of software you bring into a business has a learning curve. It has got a curve. You get everyone happy and excited, then everyone gets depressed and sad and and frustrated, and then. Once there's an adoption, you normally come out the top and the other end, hopefully getting the business value that you were hoping to achieve. So when we look at, at cost of ownership, have, have we taken into account that the initial adoption period is going to take longer than you think? The initial adoption period is going to come up with additional things. And many salespeople that sell software, don't share this information with their with their clients. They don't share this information um, while they're doing the sales presentations. In fact, some sales pitches and sales presentations are so slick, they have been developed over a number of years. So by the time the salesperson does the sales demo, if you like, the configurations that have been done are so near perfect because they redo this, these demonstrations. So by the time you view it, you're looking at a mature system that you're viewing. What you're not viewing is how long it takes to get there. And cost of ownership over 10, 15, 20 years needs to take into account that when I do upgrades, I would probably need to get consulting help. When I do upgrades, there might be things that break. In other words, the connections between my other software might not work anymore. I might now need to get additional integrations and so on. So there's a ton of things that we, we need to cover in this specific forum. And, and every week I'm going to come up with a brand new uh, topic. We can maybe cover it in one day. We can maybe cover it in, in two or three sessions. But you know, a, a key thing that's happening these days is this integration thing and letting systems talk to each other. And, and there's a big drive now, I see by a lot of software developers that are trying to build all functionality into one single system. So now an ERP system doesn't just have bookkeeping and accounting, customer suppliers, general ledger, you know, some stock control, et cetera. They are building in additional modules, project management. They're building in CRM and they're building in e-commerce and they're building in um, calendars and they're building, I mean, it's just getting quite crazy. But what the salespeople don't tell you when you write up front is, to not just to implement all those different components, take you time in different phases and the adoption thereof, but that sometimes those functions are sold as if they are complete functions. But what's happened is that the developing co the company, the vendor, has decided, for instance, project management, when they add that module in, it's going to be nowhere near, initially anyway, nowhere near the quality of a, 
an external system that's been designed 100% for project management, where you have to decide as a customer, do I buy one that's a, that's got everything in, or do I buy two, one core, let's call it accounting system, and a core project management system, because project management includes things like timesheets, um, estimates, um, dealing with things like uh, even dealing with tenders and and answering tenders. So you need document management, you need uh, version control, and then you need your estimate planning. And then when you do project management, you need to be able to bring in costing and, and cost versus budget. And, and you need to be able to have change requests and adjustments to, to a project and implementation of some sort. So that's an, that's an example of, let's call it a, a, a topic we need to cover at some stage, it's like the different types of software you get. I mean, you've got project management, you've got manufacturing is another module that can either be built into the ERP if you buy a higher level ERP, or you got to buy an additional module. Then there's then there's different software vendors that would be doing that versus the, the accounting. Then you got to talk about integration and getting these connected. And then, then one of the big myths is integration is just like across the board. It just works where sometimes you just have to narrow it down and say, what are my integration points? What point talks to what point? Do I need to have this being the master data and this being the slave data? And it only works in one direction. So in other words, my customer record, for instance, um, my customer, um, my client or customer, their company name, their company registration number, their VAT or tax registration numbers, all those numbers, for instance, are master data that are kept only in my accounting system. Other systems can maybe call on that data, but may not change it because it's a proper business process to make changes to your um, accounting system and your data within it. So there are governance issues, there's security issues, um, banking details, for instance, changing that. You want, you know, you want some kind of double check because if you've got a supplier for instance that's been registered on your accounting system and somewhere someone can change it into their own banking details and off you see there goes a big chunk of cash into someone else's bank account and you didn't have any control access control or even um, control in terms of what data gets updated or not so it can be quite complex but it can also be very simple so you can decide what's master what's slave and what direction the information uh, works and we'll cover that um, in in the weeks to come so there are multiple things to think about when you're busy uh, either selecting new software or re-implementing your current software or you are looking to adding in a plugin and then there's other other things like devices um, you know, simple things like printers, but people are doing a lot more scanning. Um, people are doing, um, uh, you know, uh, tagging. Uh, we've got uh, clients that do e events companies. They build these massive tents. The tent poles, the tent pegs, the the covers, the sheets, the the chairs, the tables. The um, they even have a stage. They've got sound equipment. All that. All those get electronically tagged, so we can track exactly where they are. You know, that again comes, does that come into warehouse management? Does that come into Internet of Things? Does that come into what kind of um, solution can you get for that, uh, for, for those um, business requirements? So, and then we can then talk now, you know, maybe about things like uh, project management. Project management in terms of an implementation of new software is is, is something that that, that is... Uh, I would say sometimes neglected purely because clients or customers can't see the value in paying someone to type up a document that has got, let's call it the, um, uh, I mean, if we'd look at Prince2 project management or any of the, uh, of the let's call it core project management uh, methodologies, let's take Prince2, for instance, which, which, I, which I think is a really good methodology. If you take Prince2, it requires things like a project charter. It requires things like scoping documents. And scoping could be business, you know, uh, understanding the, the, the business requirement and then going into the, into the software requirements. And then we go into what we call functional requirements because that's done at the use case level. So that's the, the buttons that need to be pressed. But 
the software requirement can be at the model module level and, and integration level. And then your business requirement is what needs to drive everything. I mean, that project management is a massive topic. So in the next, uh, next week's coming, I'll be addressing every single one of these topics one at a time. And we'll be building a library of, of really solid ERP information, but from a client's perspective, from a customer's perspective, from a, from a buyer of software and a user of software. So if you're a CFO, if you are a business owner, um, if you are a division manager or, or you run operations or you run your production plant or you run your warehouse, or you're a sales manager and you need proper sales uh, software, or you're a marketing person and, and you need marketing automation. Marketing automation is a fascinating uh, topic. Marketing automation in terms of the integrations into different social media platforms and, and so on. There is a ton to talk about. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is an introductory uh, uh, session today. This is just to lay the, la uh, lay the landscape really of where we're going with this this episode. Every week, um, I'll be posting what the next week's topic is. Please join us. Please contribute. Please add any questions if there's a pressing need that you want to discuss, or there's something that that that's frustrating you and you you need just a bit of feedback. Come online. I mean, I'm, uh, this is an open forum for anybody to even uh, come and uh, place their comments if you want to just do it um, in terms of a comment underneath uh, you know wherever you are uh, watching this live stream you're welcome to do that too okay so so we covered a whole lot of things but the the coming back to the fundamental is 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 my my key um sort of takeaway today for you is that you've got erp and business management software it's they're roughly the same thing ERP is probably an older, older term. Enterprise resource planning is an older term that, that's been around for a long period of time. And a lot of people have still still use that as a term. BMS or business management software is, is probably covers a broader uh, um, spectrum where you might now have ERP just covering the core functions. And then business management software can be core functions plus a whole lot of additional functionality etc but this can be a minefield and and often I, i've got to say i feel so sorry for for people that have to make decisions around what software they're going to buy um, especially if it's a larger organization what software they're going to buy what does the implementation plan look like who's my internal implementation team am i selecting the right vendor am i selecting the right implementation partner um because most software companies use a channel. They don't themselves do implementations. They have a separate channel partnership with implementation specialists. Uh, they, you know, most vendors, if you're buying, you know, if it's a, whatever the software uh, brand is, many of them have, have external companies that are doing implementation. So how do I choose the right vendor? How do I choose the right implementation partner? And again, you might have multiple implementation partners because you've gone and selected three or four to five different types of software. <laughs> so now you have all these teams able to work together. Do you have a central project management office? In other words, do you, do you manage the entire project separately as multiple projects into a program? Or do you, do you do this in a phased approach? You do the one and then the other, then the other, which is often highly recommended but also cost of ownership and so on. So we will be covering many, many of these topics in the next few weeks and months as, as we go. And I would highly encourage you to please leave your, uh, your questions during the course of the week. Um, subscribe to, to the channel. Um, this will be dedicated to ERP and business management software, but from a customer or client's point of view. The frustrations as well as the, the successes that clients have had um, implementing and using uh, software tools out there uh, and, and, and actually making best use of it or making complete uh, failures of it or having it cost so much money that it drains the actual cash flows of the business but is so critical that 
you can't change. So thank you very much for joining me today. And I appreciate you, uh, everyone that's, that's attended today and anyone that's going to be watching the the, the recording. Um, the future uh, broadcasts will all be in a in lesson format, if you like, or lecture format. So I'll be taking a topic. Um, I'll have interactions, but I'll take a topic and I'll be presenting it as a lecture or a course format, if you like. And I'll be creating multiple modules in each one of the different areas that are critical for when you're selecting, implementing, maintaining, and even just and trying to understand what's out there um, in terms of the availability of solutions and so on and what to do, what not to do. So thank you very much. Have a super weekend and thank you for joining me.